Hello everyone, my name is Sandy Lene, and welcome to Psychic Creations. We have a fun show for you today. As you can see, we are on location in front of the St. Charles Hotel. Now, the structure that you see behind me was originally actually two hotels, and they were built in 1862. The two-story that you see was called the Mueller Hotel and began construction in May of 1862 by Mr. Mueller and co-owner George Remington. The three-story structure was begun a month earlier in April and upon its completion was dubbed the St. Charles Hotel, named after the well-reputed hotels from back east. Now, the hotels are both built in the Italiante style, which was popular architecture from the 1860s to the 1890s. And some of the examples of the Italiante uh, architecture are the wide front entrances, the flat roof, the cornice line, and the massive brackets. The Mueller Hotel, the two-story part, was marketed itself towards the working class clientele. Lots of miners stayed in the Mueller Hotel. Now the St. Charles Hotel was billed as a first class hotel and was reported to be the pleasantest resort in Carson and everything kept by the bar is the best quality. At the prime, both hotels were attractively landscaped and were documented as the most elegant hotels in the then Nevada Territory. Now today, the hotel holds the esteemed honor of being a continuous hostery since 196, I'm sorry, <laughs> 1862. Okay, now let's go inside and have a look around. historical St. Charles Hotel. At this wall, now archway, is the dividing point of the two hotels. This, where I'm standing, was the Mueller Hotel, and behind me down the hallway and up the staircase is the St. Charles Hotel. Now, in 1894, a man by the name of Gilbert Briggs brought both of the hotels combined the two, opened a, 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 hello, <laughs> opened a hole in the, uh, the hallway, and then he called it the Briggs House. Now, actually, this hotel at one time had 206 rooms, and the conference room here was a place where legislative issues were discussed. One noteworthy occasion was on June 30th, 1865, when the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Shiler Colfax, he spoke here. Now the hotel has had many names. First built, it was called the St. Charles Hotel, and then as mentioned, it became the Briggs House in 1894. In 1910, upon the hotel being sold, it was the, the name was changed to the Golden West Hotel. And then in 1934, the name was changed again to the Traveler's Hotel when it was sold. The hotel was sold again in 1949, becoming the Page Hotel. In 1953, the hotel was sold once more, and the name was changed to the Pony Express Hotel. And for 43 years, this hotel slowly but surely deteriorated as well as the surrounding areas, um, the stores and homes and shops around the hotel. And it just got to be known, this, this section of Carson City got to be known literally as Skid Row. 
It was in very, very bad shape. Now we are in one of the main hallways of the St. Charles Hotel section, or section of the hotel. Now, in 1993, a man by the name of Bob McFadden purchased the derelict building, and he began the extensive remodeling and renovations. For 10 years, McFadden, um, I'll edit this, let me just, let me get my thoughts here. Okay, for 10 years, McFadden bought not only the hotel, but the surrounding buildings as well, and he pulled everything out of its squalor, and he returned the name of St. Charles Hotel back to this building. Now, selling the hotel in 2004 to the Lopicolos, they have continued with the restorations and, restora uh, and remodeling of this structure. Now, in this hotel, several noted personalities have either worked here, or stayed here, or even lived here. And they include the 1870 um, state treasurer, George Toofley, the famous stagecoach driver, Hank Mung, and of course, journalist, Mark Twain, and the crew of the 1897 Corbett Fitzsimmons boxing uh, match. They stayed here too. Rodeo showgirl Ada Mankin, she stayed here quite often when she was doing the rodeo shows in the Carson City area. And also actor and director Clint Eastwood. He stayed here and he, he had a movie called Honky Tonk Man that was partially filmed here. He and his son Kyle. Um, there's two rooms on the back side of this hotel. That's where the ending parts of the Honky Tonk Man movie was filmed. Now also, the heavyweight boxing champion, Larry, fighting Irish Pat Duncan, he lived his last eight months of his life here in this hotel. never left this hotel. This staircase that I was standing in, he is seen there often. We kept capture his energy or many times on our film and on our still pictures. And also too, when we have our recording devices, we capture his wonderful voice on our digital and tape recorders. Now in this room that I'm standing in, this happens to be one of the newly remodeled rooms and which you can rent and stay in. This happens to be a suite as it has its own kitchen along with the room, bathroom, and a very large closet. But now the TVI, the paranormal team that I am affiliated with, um, has been fortunate to investigate this hotel since 2005. And we have found some very interesting spirits, such as Larry Duncan and the man that used to live in this room by the name of Phil. He was an abusive man when he was alive, and many women that come and visit his room here looking for spirits, when they come into Phil's room here, he, well, he has many times, and he could pull a woman's hair. He did not like women, and so he doesn't pull big handfuls, but he'll pull two or three strands to where it really stings. I've had that happen before, and it doesn't feel very good at all. Now, another spirit that we capture throughout the second floor of this hotel is that of a young boy. And it's kind of heartbreaking when we hear his voice on our tape recorders and digital recorders because he's crying out for his his mother. You hear him say, Mama, Mama. You can tell he's searching for her. He's been searching for her for many, many years that we believe. Now, two, a spirit that we capture a lot of is a cat. 
which actually, when they were doing the renovations a few years back, the, uh, they were up in the attic and they found a, well, a dead cat up there. And many, many years now, we and other investigators have seen a cat scampering around, and also we get lots of meows on our digital and tape recorders and on the audio po portion of our videos. It's really cool. Now, there's one story that I love to talk about a spirit that's up on the third floor. I discovered her in 2006, and she's really quite the thing. <laughs> When I first discovered her, I noticed that she was wearing a clothing from probably about the late 1880s, a uh, yellow dress, it was pretty dirty. And she was angry, oh, she was so mad. And so being I have the ability to where I can see those that have crossed over and communicate with them, I asked her, I said, why are you so angry? And she told me in no uncertain terms that she was angry because her lover shot her before he paid her. <laughs> so I guess she is still here waiting to get her fee. <laughs> now, outside of those uh, spirits, uh, of the elderly spirits that we have seen in here, we have found a lot more of the residents that lived here and crossed over here, they still remain here. Now, in room 210, right down the hall from, from Phil's room here, was a man by the name of Norm. He used to laugh all the time. And he crossed over because he was ill. And on our recorders, when we go into his room, we still capture him laughing. It's really fun to listen to your recordings later and actually hear someone, a man, his laughter. That's pretty cool. Now, in room uh, 211, we have an elderly gentleman that was ill too, and he crossed over and his name is Steve. Now, he loved to have company. And when you go and visit in his room, you might want to think about propping the door open because he will close the door and lock it and you cannot get out of his room. He doesn't want you to leave. So if that actually happens, just stand there and knock on the inside of the door and wait till someone lets you out because Steve won't. <laughs> He's a character. He's just a real character. Actually, that's happened to me. And I've had to stand there and just knock on the door and wait for the property manager to um, come and let me out. Now, on the second floor where we just were, we have captured an awful lot of paranormal activities on our cameras and recording devices. But the third floor where we're standing on now Oh boy, I'll tell you, this floor up here offers a lot of very, very strange activities, paranormal captures up here. It's very interesting up on this third floor. Now, outside of your fresh batteries instantly draining when you just come up to this second floor, or I'm sorry, third floor, we've also captured many anomalies in our pictures that we do <laughs> happen to take up here. We capture what we call spatial anomalies on our film. And what I mean by that is that you'll take a picture, and then when you take your memory card and upload it to your computer, you'll see that the picture that you took here, it will be cut into sections like almost a puzzle. Perhaps this part up here will be zoomed back, this part here will be zoomed forward, this up here will be blurry, this section over here will be like too bright. It's very, very interesting, the pictures that you can take up on this third floor. And um, all the rooms up here have got interesting energies too. I'm going to tell you about a few of them. In this room here, beside me, it's, it's room 309. And a few years ago, while I was walking upstairs to get some pictures, uh, and some video. I had the camcorder, in, you know, in my face here so I could look through the viewfinder. I walked into room 309 and I got hit with ectoplasm. And what that is, is kind of a, well, supernatural type of, of water that comes out of nowhere. Now, when I walked in, the ectoplasm sprayed across the lens of my camcorder and it also sprayed across my microphone. Now, I did not see it this. 
I did not hear it, and being I had the camera right here to look through the viewfinder, I did not feel it on my face, my neck, my hand. In fact, I did not know that I was even hit with ectoplasm until I, there again I got home, uploaded my memory card to the computer, and I was just completely astonished to see this rain hit the camera lens, and you could hear it hit the microphone, it went, you know, like, like water will do. I was just astonished. It was just absolutely amazing. Now, another room up here happens to be this room right here, 310. There is a very grouchy woman that lives in here. She does not like people being in her room. And if you happen to go into her room, she will slam the door on you. Uh, so you're in the room. You can get out. She's not like Steve, though. <laughs> you can open the door and get out. But there's a lot of times, though, that when you're leaving her room, she will slam the door on you. And um, one of our TVI members a few years back, he was leaving this room. She slammed the door, and it actually hurt the back part of his uh, foot, his heel. And also, too, what's interesting is there is a bedspread on the bed here that when we have come up here, we will see it pulled up into little mounds. And it's like, how in the world can you do that? And so we would smooth out these bedspread, leave for a couple minutes, come back. Here it is, pulled up, pinched up into little mounds. Now we did an experiment. Underneath the material part of the bedspread, there's like this thick netting or thicker netting. And when you pick up, well, when we picked up, the bedspread, the whole bedspread came up. It did not peek into little mounds. We don't know how that spirit did that. It's very interesting. She does that a lot. Now, behind me, there is a room, room 308. I really don't like to go into this room because one time we went in, we had the property manager with us. Someone had lived in this room for many, many, many years. And when he moved out, the property manager said, well, here, I'll show you what the room looks like. Well, she was the only one that had the key. She unlocked it. We walked in and the TV was on. And that was kind of startling for the property manager to see the TV on because nobody had been living in there for quite a few weeks. Well, when we walked in, like I said before, I have an ability where I can see and I also feel the spirits. Um, I walked in, I could feel something just not right in that room. I walked over to the wall, I turned around and looked back towards where the TV was, and there was this black shadow right on the TV. It was a human form, and I quickly took a picture of it, yay. And then I told uh, the property manager and another TVI member that was with me, I said, we need to leave this room now. And so we did. Now, also, there's been many times where in, in these rooms that I, I spoke of, and also in this hallway, that I, uh, we've set up surveillance cameras, and we get all kinds of floating anomalies all over the place. Now, one of them might be a man by the name of Will, he used to live here at the end of this hallway in a room. He was ill and so he crossed over, but he guards this, this hallway like you wouldn't believe. If you come up here and you take many pictures, you will see his energy orb up here in all of your photos. And we believe, and well, we think and we believe that some of the floating anomalies that we've captured on our video cameras is probably Will getting into the picture saying, here I am, I'll say cheese. Now, another anomaly that we picked up on here was this haunted painting. There was a paranormal happening uh, that we were part of that happened four years ago. It was right after our, I'm sorry, it, was, it took four years in the making to get an end result for the paranormal happening that we discovered in 2005. It was our very first um, uh, what am I trying to say, <laughs> investigation here in the hotel. And this painting actually was down the hall and it was in a frame. And when I first saw it, I did not like it at all. I knew that it was haunted. I could see things moving around in it. And I went, oh, that's a haunted painting. Well, I could feel the negative energies attached to it. It was just not a good feeling, this painting. Right after we left, the painting disappeared. 
the property manager, Linda, she searched for it everywhere and it was just nowhere to be found. Almost four years to the date, Linda was walking down this hallway here and to unlock the back door and she noticed something was just different in the conference room which has a window leading from the room out into the hallway. So she unlocked the door and turned the lights on and I'll be darned if this painting minus the frame was leaning up against a dresser that was stored in there. She got on the telephone, she called me and says, get down here quickly, you're not going to believe what I just found. So it was just almost one month shy of being four years that this painting actually found its way back home. Then, because it was haunted <laughs> and a lot of people around here just did not want it, they asked me if I would like to have it. And I said, jokingly, actually, I said, sure, I'll take it. So they actually gifted it to me. And I said, well, I'm not going to take that home. And if I do, it's going to stay out in the garage. So why don't we keep that in a little museum room here? And that way, visitors can come in and look and try and feel the energies that are in this haunted painting. Now, a lot of times, people will start feeling the painting when they even just enter into this room. They will feel nauseous. They will get a headache. They'll feel dizzy. Now, also, too, if you don't feel those sensations, the people will come up here and they'll touch the painting. Some will say, oh my gosh, that is so hot or very warm. Other people will come up, they'll touch it and go, oh gosh, that's really cold. And then other people that have come in, they don't feel the sensations uh, and they don't feel anything. It's, it's very interesting how each person will either feel something or they won't. tour of the St. Charles Hotel and if you would like to read more about the history and paranormal happenings that are always going on in this hotel I have written a book called St. Charles Hotel Carson City Nevada the Wild West Past and the the Haunted Present and you can purchase my book through my website which is www.sandypsychicstones.com now, if you would like to visit or stay in this hotel, please get a hold of Linda Wounds. She is the property manager here. And it is uh, the St. Charles Executive Suites at 775-882-1887. And the hotel is located at 310 South Carson Street. Please note that if you do come to visit, um, let Linda know because there are residents and of course guests staying here and um, respectfully you need to be uh, quiet and not bother the residents that live here. That's just the respect for them. Thank you for watching Psychic <laughs> Creations. Can't even remember the name of my show. <laughs> and once again, my contact information is www.sandypsychicstones.com if you would like to purchase a book or if you would like to have a psychic stone reading. I'm Sandy Linnae and we'll see you next show. <laughs>